Hello, I'm Professor Matthew Rotella, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be going over using the uh, Arnold Area Light to uh, well to render in Arnold. It's a uh, it's my light of choice when uh, when rendering in Arnold. It, I mean, it all comes down to personal taste, I guess. But this one is definitely my favorite. It's very versatile, and it can do a lot of different things. Uh, so I'll just make one, go into Arnold Lights and click on Area Light, and I'll make myself an Area Light. And it looks like this. And I'll scale it up, and you'll see it has this little line coming out the front, which, uh, you know, I got a pretty, uh, which also in terms of my setup, you can see I just got a cyclorama and a can. Um, but yeah, it's got this little line coming out the front, and that line is the direction that your light is uh, pointing. Which, uh, you can see it's basically like a square panel by default, and, you know, this obviously makes it really, like, instantly good for uh, doing lighting setups such as, uh, like, a long fluorescent light or, like, a fluorescent panel or something like that, or also uh, kind of simulating like a softbox in like a studio setup. Really great for that. Uh, anyway, the amount of light that emits from it will be dependent on its size and its scene scale. And of course, uh, yeah, so as you scale the light up and down, you'll get different results. And <clears throat> uh, You'll generally get uh, finer, uh, more uh, stark results with smaller lights, and of course more diffused results with uh, larger lights, which is nice because, uh, well, it, it kind of works how you would expect uh, with lights in uh, real life. So it's very intuitive, and that's part of why I like it also. But here, let's see what we get by default. Let's see, this is what... I was working with in test. Okay, obviously we're looking too dim here. I'll up my exposure. It doesn't matter which of these numbers, intensity or exposure, you adjust. Uh, they both control different parts of the same math. Uh, five, still looking too dull, but anyway, 10, refresh render. All right, now we're getting somewhere. And yeah, you can see that by default there's a lot of spread, uh, but I also get like really nice soft shadows by default. Uh, like you can see, yeah, this sort of shadow quality that we're getting, which you know to get some quicker results here. Let me, I'm gonna just cut my resolution in half. Anyway, render, fresh render. There we go. Yeah, and yeah, there you can see, like you get nice shadow, uh, nice soft shadows by default, which you can up your samples to help uh, reduce some noise. And if you want this to be a lot uh, finer, then you can just come in here and reduce your spread. A value of zero will effectively make it like a laser but uh, zero uh, is not currently supported so you'll get errors if you make it full zero but you can see here I'm getting a, a tighter beam of light and it's also much more uh, stark against the side of my can there and then yeah the, the tighter I get the more of like a spotlight sort of effect I'll get but anyway I digress let me see I want to check the properties of this image real quick uh, I'll just let Photoshop open that because <laughs> I just want to check the resolution I forgot to check at a time regardless Anyway, I'm going to turn my spread back to the uh, original one and uh, continue from here, but what is this? 
1320 by 1500. Okay. Duly noted. Uh, okay, so maybe I should have left that up. Regardless, uh, alongside that, uh, basically other things that are cool about the area light is uh, they, you get these attributes to control the roundness uh, on the edge, which you can effectively make this quad into a circle. So, yeah, you'll get a full circular roundness at one, and then you can also soften the edge uh, if you, uh, uh, that way you can still have like reduced spread, but then have like a softer edge so you don't have to get quite so laser like. But then also, uh, uh, what area lights are good for uh, are they really good for putting textures on for lights? Uh, so that you can mimic different types of real-world lights, which I like to work with a lot of these from the SIBL archive from uh, HDR Labs. Uh, you can see there's this little lightsmith collection. So if you want to have like a window or a television, softbox, phot a photographer's umbrella, fluorescent tube, uh, synthetic area A, or, or all these like LED panels, so on and so forth, all these things, uh, you can get these EXR images and put them on an area light and basically have a photorealistic representation of them, uh, which is what I was doing here, which I already forget the resolution of it. I'll just put it at 1000. And then here, I'll attach the file for that panel. And, okay, 1320 is my horizontal resolution. Um, yeah, so I have synthetic area A. And you can see it's this like LED panel. And, oh, I forget, 1320, that's such a weird number. Um, 1320, and anyway, with that adjustment, and I'll refresh my render image. Not quite seeing it there. Let me position my light a little differently. Port render. And fresh render. Man, in my test at the beginning, you could see it so clearly. Uh, second here. I'm just trying to get it. There we go. So you can see that fluorescent panel in the refraction and those sorts of results that we'll get. And happen to position it really well but uh yeah anyway that's the general idea there but yeah so you're able to there it is that's kind of more what I was getting but yeah. Anyway, the, the, you can use these uh, these textures and these these photos uh, of of real lights, uh, like on your area light. Yeah, to get those uh, simulate those photorealistic effects uh, from real different types of lights, and so on and so forth. But also, uh, it comes in a few different shapes. Like you can make it a cylinder or a disc, and light with those, and it just further increases how versatile it can be and uh yeah they're they're really great for studio lighting setups so let me see here let me just 
position this. I'll go negative 90 and scale this guy up. And but they're really great for all sorts of different light sources. Uh, light coming in. Uh, the, uh, but. Yeah, okay. Anyway, let's duplicate this guy. Flip him around. 90. Let's duplicate him again. And he's going to point this way. And so negative 90 in this direction. And this will likely be too much light, but let's see what we get. Not enough light, that's not what I expected. But that's because I scaled them up, so it sort of uh, dispersed the intensity even further. But let me, I'll just go 15 for all of them. But basically, you could stop the tutorial here if you want. That's uh, basically all I really wanted to go over. Uh, the, the important things are, yeah, like the size of the light, the fact that you can change the shape of it, that you can apply textures to, to get uh, different photorealistic types of uh, studio lights, or even, you know, like I said, things like television sets or windows. Uh, and the fact that you get so much control over the shape of the light is really where it comes in handy as well. And because you can make it so laser focused or really diffused, obviously, ooh, 15 is too high. Uh, but let's go 13. And render rush. Okay. Perhaps I should move both of these further out, but uh, and, oh, let's see what that does for me. Render, fresh render. That's looking a little bit better, but uh, yeah. Uh, Anyway, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to go over uh, with the area light, just super versatile light, uh, and uh, the, well, I really like the fact that it handles so much of, like, uh, the, like getting really good quality of light uh, so easily, and like all of what you would want a light to do. Like the uh, like the decay and the uh, like the softer shadows, the spread, like all of it comes pre-built. You get a nice result right off the bat, and uh, and then the values are super easy to tweak. On top of that, and I mean it's just like aim it and go. So uh, yeah, super fun light to experiment with too. Uh, anyway, that's that. Uh, and uh, have a nice day. Hope that was educational. <laughs>